Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Physics. This is going to be a fairly short episode because I'm right in the middle of my exams at the minute, so I don't have much time. Now, today's question is sent in by Calvin Jones, who is asking why kinetic energy is proportional to velocity squared. Now, for some obscure reason, you people have decided that my most uh, popular video so far is me making a whistle out of a carrot. So, with that in mind, I'm going to be using a carrot as my uh, demonstrative tool today. So anyway, on with the video. Now, consider my carrot, and this carrot is on a frictionless, flat surface. And I'm going to apply a constant force to this object. And now, according to Newton's second law, F equals ma, the carrot will accelerate in the direction of the force. And because I'm applying constant force, the carrot will have a constant acceleration. So we can write this as F equals m delta v over delta t, where delta v over delta t is the change in velocity uh, divided by the change in time, which is the acceleration by definition. Now, whilst I'm pushing the carrot with the constant force F, I'm using energy. And the energy I use is equal to the force I apply times the distance I move whilst applying that force. So here it's force times delta x. So this energy goes into the carrot. So the carrot gains energy equal to the force times the distance it moves whilst it's accelerating, uh, which is equal to its mass times the change in velocity divided by the change in time, its acceleration, times the distance moved, which I've written here as delta x. Now I'm going to rewrite this kinetic energy as mass times the change in velocity times the change in distance over the change in time, which is equal to the mass times the velocity times the change in velocity. As delta v goes to zero, so as the increments in the increase in velocity get smaller and smaller, uh, this equation actually becomes an integral. So we have the kinetic energy is the integral between its starting velocity, v0, its final velocity, v, of mv with respect to v, dv. And now assuming the carrot was stationary at the start, just to make life easier, we see that the kinetic energy gained by the carrot is equal to a half mv squared. In the case that the carrot was already moving, we can see that the kinetic energy gained by the carrot whilst I was applying the force, is equal to a half m final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared. And so by plugging some numbers into this, we can answer the second part of the question, which is why does a moving object require more energy to accelerate it than a stationary object? So another part of the question is essentially, what's the relationship between the kinetic energy and the momentum? Because the momentum increases linearly with velocity, whereas the kinetic energy increases as the square of the velocity. So we define the momentum of the carrot p as its mass m times its velocity v. So we can very easily substitute the momentum into the kinetic energy equation a half mv squared, and we get kinetic energy is momentum squared over 2m. So the moral of all this is that if you want your carrot to be lethal, you fire it really, really fast, because its kinetic energy goes as the square of its velocity. So I hope that answered the question that was asked and that you found the video at least vaguely interesting. Uh, if you have a question of your own that you want answering, please leave it in the comments or in a personal message and I'll make a video on it when I have the time. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Here's another couple of my videos including the carrot video. Weird people. <laughs>